Okay, welcome back to Paddy's Golf Tips. We're here at the Preserve at Iron Horse down in West Palm Beach. Uh, I'm going to show you how to hit draws and fades. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Podrick Harrington. <laughs> Generally what happens with a lot of people, if they're hitting a, I don't know, if you're hitting a draw and you want to hit a fade, all of a sudden you want to go from hitting a draw to hitting a one yard fade. That's not how it works. So in golf, the golf swing is a bit like a, a metrodome, right? So it goes from side to side, right? So if you're changing something and you're say you're over here, say this, say this is a cut, you need to go all the way over here and hit a hook. You need to really exaggerate and go big time on a hook to get rid of a slice. Now as you get better, that movement ends up, so it starts off, you've got to go wildly one side to the other, and eventually if you get good enough, it's always going to tick a little bit, okay? Nobody has one shot forever. It's always going to be, I've got too much fade, I've got to work on my draw, I've got too much draw, I've got to work on my fade. So it's always going to be a ticking clock. Okay, so how do we essentially hit a draw on a fade? Well, this, we're going to completely discount miss hits. So if you miss hit it, the ball can go against the laws of ball dynamics, okay? When it hits the toe or the heel or the shank, so just ignore those. On a straight hit, three things affect where the golf ball goes, okay? The path, where the face is aiming, and how much you hit down or up on the golf ball. Now, for our purposes, we're gonna completely discount the down and up because that's irrelevant. It comes into slight bit of play, the down force, D force, whatever you wanna call it, comes slightly into play for a really top class player. For everybody else, just ignore that. All we need to know is path, the direction you're swinging the club, and the face where that's pointing. Those are the only two parameters that will cause a fade and a draw for normal people. And that's all you need to think about. So essentially, I'm gonna show you here, if, if we can see this club here in this, this video here. So if we can see, if that's our direction, okay? Anytime you swing left to the face, so if the face is square down that direction, Anytime we swing left of the face angle, it's gonna cause a fade. So if the face is shut and we swing left of the shut face, so if the face is shut and we continue left, it's still gonna be a fade. So anything left of the club face is gonna be a fade. Again, if that's square, anything right of, any path right of that is gonna cause a draw. Even if our face is open, if our face is open at impact, but we're swinging further right than the open face, it's going to cause a draw. So for most golfers, you just need to concentrate on the path because the face kind of reacts to the path. So if you want to draw the ball, you just got to concentrate and swing it out to the right, wildly out to the right. You don't have to play that way. This is on the practice ground. And if you want to fade the ball, concentrate and swing it wildly to the left. Some of that's going to get in and maybe on the golf course, you'll be that much left. Or if you keep swinging wildly to the right, maybe you'll be that much right and you'll hit a little draw, okay? but you must exaggerate the move. So how are we going to do that? Well, for me, it's pretty straightforward. So if I'm setting up here and I want to draw this next shot, when I'm taking my practice swings, I swing way out to the right. Like I'm hitting my right tie in the backswing and the follow through. And look, look how much out to the right it is. The minute I swing to the right, that club will start flipping over. I'm going to, if I made that swing in the golf course, I might if I'm going around the tree, that would be a big hook. But if I make that enough times, when I go to hit it, hopefully it will be just slightly into out, giving me a little draw. But I must exaggerate it. Hit your right tie. Look at the way the toe goes up in the air. It's way out there. It's not a golf swing. It's an exaggeration. If I do that enough, I'm going to hit a draw. I'm going to hit one down the range here just to, just to show you. So if I stand here and I want to hit a draw, if I exaggerate out to the right, like so, big exaggeration. When I go to swing, I'm going to swing and I've hit a nice little draw. I've only hit a five yard draw there. I didn't try and swing out there. I actually tried to swing without any thought when I went to hit the golf ball. But I'd built, if I swing 50 degrees right as five times or whatever number of times you need to do, some of that is going to, residue of that is going to be left when I think I'm swinging neutral and I end up swinging a degree or two right. 
giving me a nice draw. And again, I can do the opposite. If I want to hit a fade, I stand there and look, I hit my left tie on the follow through. So this is not a golf swing. It's out and across, it's chopping. It's, it's not what you think. I do that a few times. That's whatever, 45 degrees left. When I go to hit it, some of that's going to be left in my swing, maybe a degree or two. And I go to hit it. And I've hit a lovely fade, probably seven or eight yard fade there cut. Okay. All I did, I didn't change anything when I was swinging. I changed it when I was practicing. So for you guys, girls at home, if you want to draw the ball, you're not trying to change your swing by a degree. You're trying to change your swing by 50 degrees in practice. So you're trying to really exaggerate the motion if you want to draw or fade it. Go that way. Don't try and get it that way because that's, it's too subtle a change for it to take. It, you know, if you're a good player, you could probably do that and it might take after a couple of weeks. But if you're a handicapped golfer, you know, who's playing every so often, you're a 14 handicap, you know, exaggerate it. It will get in there quicker. You might get some benefit even within a few days or even within it. I, I could see the benefit for some people within a few practice swings, but exaggerate it. Way into out or way across it. Outside of that, they, that's the easiest way to hit the draw and fade. Absolutely, just exaggerate and you'll get a feel for it. And, and to be honest, I've said this before, if you hit 100 balls in a row and you hit the, every odd number with the biggest slice you could hit way left across, really chop it, and then you hit every even number with the biggest draw way out away from your body, okay? So you've hit 50 massive slices, 50 massive draws, when you go to swing the 101st swing, what do you think it's going to be? You've hit 50 shots going this way, this way. The likelihood is you're going to be neutral in the middle. So never worry about exaggerating your practice as long as you're compensating on both sides. So if you're a slicer, exaggerate practicing with a draw. Always practice from the left-hand side of the range. Always make sure to practice in a right-to-left wind. Practice with the, the practice ground and, and, and the hole always to your right. That will help you swing out. If you want to stop hooking the ball or drawing, practice from the right-hand side of the range. So you're always pulling across and going to the left. Tee up on the right-hand side of the tee box. Help you cut across. The other two ways of getting a, a, a good draw and fade into your swing without having to think too much about it is find a side slope. So if you can find a slope where the ball is above your feet, even a little bit of an upslope, if the ball's above your feet, you're going to feel very comfortable and you're going to draw the ball. And again, if the ball's below your feet, so it's slight, slightly away from you, and you have to bend over more, you're going to fade the ball. So those two ways are you naturally, without you having to do any thinking, practice the ball above your feet on a slope like this, so that you hit like this. Like that much slope there would be enough. I, 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 here we go over here and we'll show you. So, so we got a slight down slope here. It's probably, so it's sliding down here. So if I was, if I wanted to draw the ball, I'd have the ball above my feet like that. And if I wanted to fade the ball, I'd come over here, going down the range. And look, instinctively off this slope, I'm gonna aim a bit further left because it's gonna fade. And off she goes. And clearly if I found myself a right to, here, we got a right to left slope here. So without changing anything. So I've got a nice hanging lie here where the ball is above my feet. Even a little bit above that way is okay, but it does mainly side slope. Again, again, because it's above my feet, naturally I'm starting to move over here. The ball is gonna come back a little bit. This is what causes a draw. And I'm gonna swing out to my right and hit a beautiful little draw. Without ha me having to think, that's just natural. You will instinctively side slope. That's probably one of the best practice drills for most golfers. If you, you'll get, if you're a slicer of the ball, you'll get 20 yards more by practicing off a side slope. And if you don't believe me, when you're on the golf course, there's been a couple of holes that you've played well over the years. And I guarantee you, they have a hanging fairway like that. And you hit the ball much solider when the ball is above your feet. It's much easier to hit it this way than necessarily down here. But once you get used to this one, it does get into your swing when, you're, when you have to go down to a level lie because you're used to releasing the club and aiming right.